Here is a clip of Nick at all, my friend on Twitch, a 10 times spread from 10 different splits, trying out my settings and my sensitivity for the first time. Yeah, I have no, I, I have no stick drift. Uh <laughs> Yo, hold up. This has been my most requested video by far um, from the majority of my subscribers and viewers on Twitch. So I'm going to jump right into it and not waste any time. We're going to get right into the settings. So right off the bat, we're going to want to jump into my actual button layout. The button layout is what's going to allow you to have that advantage over other players. What you're looking for is your ability to maintain mo your mobility your ability to maintain your mobility. You wanna be like super mobile the whole time you're fighting. And to do that, you're gonna need your fingers to not have to switch places consistently during the fight. So you want your fingers to stay on the jump button, you want your fingers to stay on the slide button or the crouch button while you're fighting. And so for me, while I am not using an advanced controller of any kind, I'm not using a scuff or, or I'm just using, you know, I'm just using a default controller and a lot of you guys are going to be in the same boat as as i have been in which is basically i'm just not you know i'm not i don't have enough money to spend on constant controller replacements so what i ended up falling in love with was just a default controller with some controller adjustment you know button button adjustments controller uh button layout adjustments and the most important one is going to be your jump button i have this on lb if you do play claw which is where your finger is like that you're going to be able to have that as your a button and that doesn't really change much but you do also want to have your crouch button on a button that you're going to have your thumb on or finger on you could put that on your lb if that's what you know makes you happy for example if you're a crouch spammer, you might want to have your crouch button on a button that is not your right stick, okay? I, for one, am, a, am not a crouch spammer. I, I concentrate more on my aim. So, I'm going to sacrifice the crouch in order to have better aim. If, if I do crouch, it's going to be in an emergency situation. I've run out of bullets, I'm reloading, or I am looking for the in-between like in between my shots, I'm gonna be looking for that crouch. Let's say I'm holding the Mastiff, I take a shot. I'm gonna be looking for that crouch button in between my shot here and I'm gonna readjust my positioning in a way that's gonna make it a lot harder for them to hit me while I am in between a shot. Like my thumb isn't moving from one button to another, it's staying in the same place, but it's just doing two different things. I, I, cur I currently like that a lot. Um, some people who are crouch spammers that are just gonna be, you know, crouching the entire time that they're fighting they might see that this as being somewhat of a crutch because your aim stick is the same as your crouch so you might you might like to move that onto a paddle or onto another button maybe switch it to the left um it's up to you guys i do suggest it on the right though the most the other most important thing about this is your tactical ability being on the right bumper okay i think this replaces the ping so normally you know your ping would be on your right bumper and your tactical ability might be on your A button or something. But I personally think that the tactical ability is much more important in the middle of a fight, in the middle of a situation, um, as a quick button to get your finger onto um, instead of the ping. I think the ping is important, but it's not nearly as important as the tactical ability. The ping button being on the A button is, in my opinion, the best spot for it. But that does leave the R R B open for that tactical, which is the, the most important part about it. Moving on to my actual sensitivity. You might want to tweak this a little bit. My original sensitivity from the start, from season one to season five or so, I had it on 6.5 Classic and I never changed it. I really did like that sensitivity. Um, 
I did try a couple things here and there, but I always ended up going back to 6.5 Classic. And I highly suggest sticking with a sensitivity that you feel comfortable with and not changing it. The more you change it, the harder it's gonna be for you to get used to that. You're gonna want your trigger dead zones and your all your dead zones as minimal as possible. You will see a lot of stick drift um, on older controllers and such when your dead zone is low. But the smaller the dead zone, the more um, sensitive your stick is gonna be to the touch as well. So it, is, it affects reaction speed and sensitivity. I like to have my menu cursor speed right around here, but I do find myself overcompensating and missing armor swaps uh, by like overshooting the armor when I do have it higher than this. Um, lately, I have been actually undershooting it, undershooting armor swaps. And if you do notice that you're undershooting an armor swap, and what I mean by that is like you're clicking right above the armor, then you're going to want to bump it up a little bit. And that's what I'm going to do now. I'm bumping it up just a tiny bit because I've been undershooting my armor swaps. Um, if you are overshooting it and you're, you're clicking underneath the armor, you're, you're going past the armor, um, that means that this is going to be too high. So when you're going for those armor swaps, pay attention to like how close you're getting to clicking on that armor. And if you're above it, raise it a little bit. If you're, if you're going below it, you want to nerf it down a little bit until you get it right on that armor swap every time. Moving on down here to custom look controls. This is insanely important. Um, or advanced look controls, ALCs. Uh, the most the most annoying one of them all right here is dead zone. Okay, because you do want this as low as possible so that your control and everything is more reactive and more sensitive to your touch. You really want this as low as possible. But if you have it too low, um, I'll show you for an example. Uh, you're going to have stick drift. So this is, I'm not even touching my controller. It's doing this on its own. This is stick drift. You really don't want this. This is going to affect your aim. This is going to affect when you're standing still in game. This is going to drive you actually crazy if you don't um, fix this because you're constantly going to be walking around and it's going to be bothering you. It's going to make you dizzy. It's, it's really something that you're not going to want. So um, make sure you do not have any stick drift. I currently have to have my dead zone at 8%. In, in order to avoid stick drift my sticks have been abused and that is why they have a ton of stick drift moving down here to threshold i do have this as low as possible everyone's going to tell you you're going to want this as low as possible um the change that this makes is basically if you have any extra yaw or any of these other settings turned up they will kick in when you move your stick past that threshold that having this down is going to be your best bet moving down to response curve this is basically going to be the difference between linear control and classic so if i moved this up to the default line there that is going to be classic look controls base that's basically the same as having your controls on classic this is the classic feel this is what i fell in love with i i do highly suggest it it's a great place to have your response curve at if you have this all the way down this is linear control this is basically the same as having your controls on linear it's very responsive it's it feels very twitchy um it, it makes your aim feel like you're in more control of it you feel a little bit more skilled when you're using it uh, this is what's gonna make your control or your camera look a little bit shaky when you're aiming uh but if you put this right in the middle at five or six or somewhere in the middle, um, this is where you can kind of customize it a little bit to your own preference. This is where I find that perfect sweet spot in between linear and classic. And this is the magic touch that I have on my, uh, on my control settings. Moving down to yaw and pitch, this is important to have this as high as possible before you start to feel uncomfortable. You want your yaw to be very high because what this allows you to do is to turn around quickly when you're getting shot in the back. I like to have, personally, I like to have my pitch half as high as my yaw. The pitch is your up and down. Your yaw is gonna be your left to right. So when I'm looking up and down, I really don't need my aim to be adjusted that much. I want it to stay a lot steadier up and down than I do than I want it to be left and right. You are going to want to have all of these other settings turned as low 
down as possible. These are going to affect the the consistency of your aim. Moving down to ADS, I do have this turned down to about halfway. Um, obviously, they're not perfectly halfway or, or whatnot, but I did get used to where they're at right now, so I'm not going to mess with it. If you guys want to be you know OCD and have it exactly at 250 and 125, that might be the your best bet but i did get used to where it's at right now and i do highly suggest having your ads yaw speed halfway while your ads pitch speed is a quarter way for gameplay settings these are all very personal preference types of settings you can change it to however you want but if you want your game to feel the same way as i mine does i like to have my interact prompt style on compact so i can see more when I am looking at objects on the ground, it doesn't block any of my vision for enemies nearby or behind those uh, pop-ups. Button hints I have turned off for the same reason. Less stuff on my screen, less information for my mind to process. X with shield icon is fantastic. I do like stacking. Um, that way I will be able to see when shields are broken and I will be able to see the entire number of damage that I've dealt and my, I can comprehend exactly how much health the enemy has left. If they're at full shield and I see the number 140, they're going to have 60 health remaining. I can call that out to my teammates. This allows for more precise callouts. Um, if someone's one shot, I can actually say they are one shot and I can be very con like very confident about that. Ping opacity, I have that on faded. I do want to see more things behind those pings if someone is spamming with the ping button it doesn't block my vision as much obituaries i have on mini map rotation off weapon auto cycle on empty i have that off because i do like having contr full control over what's going on with my weapons at all times auto sprint i have turned off incoming damage feedback is 3d uh taking damage closes death box i have this turned off i remember when they first added this setting it was like the biggest deal ever because i would click the button anyway even though it wasn't a thing and once they added this i fell in love with it immediately because i was able to leave the death box when i wanted to and get the armor swaps even if i was getting shot pop up pop up i have that turned on i don't even really know what that is streamer mode i have that turned off i don't think this even matters as a streamer um, the most important part as a streamer is going to be anonymous mode if you do have a problem with stream snipers this can somewhat help with that performance display uh, i have this turned on this is going to show your ping and it allow you to know whether or not your game is running smoothly moving down here to brightness i have this bumped up a tiny little bit just to help with visualization of enemies in shadows I also have field of view at 106. Having this higher is going to give you an advantage in closer range fights. Sprint view shake, having this on minimal is the most important thing. I can even I can't even comprehend having sprint view shake on normal. This basically makes your screen bounce up and down while you are sprinting and it makes it so much harder to see enemies uh, and to um, pick up enemy movement, slight enemy movements in the distance. Uh, the whole deal it just it really does affect everything you do you really want to make that make sure that this is on minimal there is no reason to have this on normal i hope that you guys see a lot of improvement in your gameplay by adapting some of these preferences to your settings if this video did help you guys out in any way with your sensitivity settings or with your controls or any of the above just please hit me with a like and that will help me out so much with the youtube algorithm and like or did i already say I meant to say uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed, so uh, thank you, and uh, I hope you guys have a good one. Share this video with people who need help with their settings, and uh, yeah.